When is the RTX 5070 Ti going to be released? Well, what about the regular RTX 5070? If you don't know who I am, I'm Chris Mizo, and I love to talk about PC and tech. So let's get straight into it. Now, apologize for my voice because Apparently, I got sick again. I don't know how it is for you this time around. Seems like 2025 has been pretty rough. I gotten sick twice already, but this isn't about that. You want to know about the RTX 5070 Ti and when it's going to be released. And I do have some great news. It's actually going to be released February 20th of 2025. The RTX 5070 will be released March 5th. And reason being, more than likely, they're trying to amp up the competition against AMD. Especially for how short the supply is with NVIDIA, they try to want to make sure to keep their market share going. If you're curious about the pricing for the RTX 5070 Ti, I also have the performance. If you want to skip to any of that, I do have timestamps down below if you're looking for that. I'm going to tell you right off the bat what the pricing is looking like. Now, the ASUS tough gaming RTX 5070 Ti, you're looking at a price of $899.99 USD. Some of the pricing you can see can range from to $939.99 USD and some of it could go as high as $999 USD. Now some of the other pricing that you may see from the micro center listings can be as high as $939.99 USD and they do have some even as high as $1,000 and 999 USD. So the RTX 5070 Ti is pretty close to what the RT the cost of the RTX 5080 FE is, the Founders Edition, which is pretty incredible. It's a pretty high and steep price, but hopefully the performance is there, which I'm going to explain over to you because we have some leaks about performance and this is off of synthetic benchmarks. Now off of the synthetic benchmarks for the RTX 5070, I can tell you right off the bat, it's going to be about 16% of an improvement. Now this is just off of what the leaks say and this isn't with deeper testing, nothing with raw power data or anything like that. This is the type of power that we're seeing from a video cards.com. That Speedway at 1440p can reach as high as 7,646 on their benchmark compared to the RTX 5080, it's reaching 8,902. Now, if you compare it to the 5080 once more and the 5070 Ti, the 5080s get reaching about 8163 on Steel Nomad. Steel Nomad's a 4K synthetic test from 3D Mark, a really excellent test to kind of get an idea of what type of uh, what type of capabilities that this graphics card has. But anyway, it's reaching 8,163 on the RTX 5080 and the RTX 5070 Ti is reaching at 6,532. It's also on Port Royal at 1440p is reaching at 19,045 while the RTX 5080 is reaching at 22,034. For those who are more interested in Time Spy Extreme with 4K, it's at 16,084 compared to 13,485. Also with a Fire Strike Extreme, it's reaching at 35,483 with the RTX 5070 Ti versus a 41,192 with the RTX 5080. 80. How about the 4070 Ti Super? 4070 Ti Super is at 29,934. It is beating a lot of the RTX 4070 Ti Super in their test. So it seems the RTX 5070 Ti is quite the improvement over its predecessor. Now the LED's performance is only about 2% under the RTX 3090 Ti, also only about close to 1% difference to the RX 7900 XT. Now some of you might be saying RIP AMD, but that's not always necessarily the case, especially if their supply issues continue, which I will get to in a moment. And I have news for everybody about the supplies because I heard from my personal source and I've also heard from other sources, they've heard the same thing. So hopefully this is a straight confirmation because this is what it seems like anyway about the uh, upcoming stock for the RTX 50 series. But anyway, to get to the point, you're probably curious about the specifications if you're not familiar with it. It does hold the GB203 Blackwell chip, which is the 2.3 gigahertz base clock. as 2.452 gigahertz boost clock. It has up to 16 gigabytes of G 
7 VRAM, and on top of it, it also has a 256-bit bus. It is up to 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Before I get into the whole supply, because I know all of you are probably looking forward to saying, when exactly is NVIDIA going to be back in supply? I will tell you surely, because there are some things that I would like to share with everybody out there, especially with the newer driver. Now, surprisingly, this hasn't really been reported as much, but that hopefully you guys hear from me and other people have complained about this issue. I brought it up on X as well. NVIDIA's newest driver, which is the 572.42, it has issues still. Now, especially for those who have the RTX 50 series, you might still have issues with the screen blacking out or the driver not really working correctly. It might give you a error message. I actually just had one from my RTX 3080 Ti that I have on my content creation machine that also gave me an error earlier on the screen. It also, some people are reporting that if you enable HDR that you do get a blue screen with the HDR being enabled. Now, hopefully a lot of these issues get fixed. Some people are complaining that you even have issues going into Fortnite, apparently, with this newer driver. Hopefully, NVIDIA looks over the issue and has a hot fix soon for everyone who are who is running into that type of issue. Before I go into the whole cable gate, which I am excited to go into a little bit more about, I'm going to talk about the supply issue that uh, NVIDIA is having. Now, I can say from the source that I have. They are saying that there is going to be a much better supply of RTX 50 series. Now, especially when it comes to the RTX 50 90s and the RTX 50 80, because as you know, it's almost non-existent. And now they are saying that there will be plenty coming into March. If that's true, uh, that is going to be quite hard for AMD to go up against Nvidia's stock supply if that holds true. Now, if it does, then you can expect a lot more easier purchases when it comes to the RTX 5090s and the 5080s. Now, this was also confirmed by someone else who also said on Twitter, on X, they put up a post saying that the supply of RTX 5090 will be stupidly high and that scalpers will cry so hard once they find out how much supplies of RTX 5090s that there will be. Now, hopefully that holds true. So everybody out there who is waiting to get a GPU, may you get a GPU very soon. And unfortunately, because of the tariffs and everything, the pricing has gone up significantly to where you're going to have to pay a little extra if you do want to get that GPU. But going into the whole cable gate, now we have a little bit more information on it. It seems like a lot more of the issues are happening with the adapters being used with the 12 volt to X16 port. For those who use those converter kits that comes with Nvidia, where you can convert your pins over to a 12 volt high power port, that is going to give some issues. There are some people that were admittedly saying that they didn't want to buy a dedicated uh, 12 volt high power port that they decided just to use that adapter. Those are the ones, unfortunately, who had to suffer the wrath of uh, the cable. Main reasons why it is such an issue is because it's restricting a lot of flow. There are electrical engineers out there from Gigabyte and also another company saying that this port should have been powered up to 600 watts. Instead, it should have been at the maximum of 300 and 25 watts instead. They mentioned that even 375 watts is a bit of a reach even for the RTX 5080. They're saying that the port isn't necessarily all that bad, but to put all that power, to put almost to double the wattage, it can give some issues. Some people also face issues with their power supplies and most power supply manufacturers, such as ASUS, that if there is any type of irregularities, inside of the connection or if there's a problem with the connection you will get blinking lights some people just ignored some of those warning signs and continued to plug in the graphics card anyway just hoping that it would just go away with a reboot but unfortunately that didn't always solve the case now i'm not blaming for anyone installing the graphics card and just wanting to use it i get it but 
it does seem like an issue that um, NVIDIA does have to resolve. And this is more of an adapter issue that they're going to have to figure out. More than likely, I wouldn't be surprised if the next generation, they start splitting out the port and use two 12-volt high-power ports on a graphics card instead, where it can evenly distribute the power for the card. It all can change. Uh, now, Mod DIY was one of the manufacturers that had the third-party cables that melted that was the one that I showed in a couple of weeks ago on a video. Now, they didn't say anything specific about their cable, but they did say they modified it to the point where it should not have those type of issues that they improve their product, so to say. Would you rather get the RX 9070, which is understandable, less worries about having a graphics card, less worries about any melting and actually will do its job of just gaming and you'll be worry free unfortunately for those who have nvidia cards now i'm not an, an nvidia hater and everybody who watches my channel knows that for sure because i use a rtx 4090 myself just to let you know i also tr am trying to get my hands on a rtx 5090 hopefully i can and i'm trying to get my hands on some other cards as well that striker out there he just received one of the prizes he got a fresh fit thank you for being one of the members of the fan bam make sure you guys congratulate them put some comments down below i hope you found this content very useful if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you know anybody else who is into PC and tech, make sure you share this video with them. If you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my X-Handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.